What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video here on YouTube. How's everyone doing today? I hope everyone's having a great week so far trading. Um, weekend's coming up. I know it's a bummer with the markets closing, but it's awesome to be able to sit, take a step back, relax for a little while, um, get some sleep, not have some pending trades all the time. You got to be worried about. Uh, today is Friday, November 2nd, it, bringing in another end to a trading week here. We had NFE jo NFP jobs reports out of the U.S., Employment data out of Canada today, busy, busy week, Bank of England meeting, um, inflation reports, all kinds of stuff going on in the markets. Anybody new to these videos, uh, my name is Corey Smith, founder of CoreFX, and I do these videos every week here via YouTube. I do a full dive into the Forex markets. I go into all the major currency pairs. This is the US dollar crosses. I go over all the indexes for each individual currency pair. Um, I also go over a little bit of S&P 500. I go over gold. I go over oil. Um, and then I go through my watch list for this week ahead. I go over everything I'm looking out for, um, all the setups that I'll be looking for developing this coming week. Um, all my returning viewers, I appreciate you guys. Thank you all very much. Um, seriously, can't thank you enough for coming by week after week and tuning into these videos. It takes a lot of time to make these, but I really enjoy doing them. And I hope you guys are getting value out of them. If you do, throw me a like, throw me a comment, subscribe if you're new to the page and you'll get notified when I come out with these new ones. Um, but I really, really just love and appreciate all you guys. I'm going to go ahead and flip this around now, dive into the charts, start breaking down what we got going on in the Forex world, and uh, see what we got coming up for next week. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the chat. All right, guys. So starting off this week with the relative performance, this shows the overall performance of each individual currency. Um, as you guys can see, we've got New Zealand, Aussie, Pound as the top three performers. We've got the yen, Swiss franc, euro as the bottom three performers. Um, what this week was a perfect example of is risk on theme in the markets. So we had the U.S. equity markets recovering from some of the worst um, trading week and month we've seen in a long time here in the U.S. Um, and this week we had a little bit of a rally, a little bit of a recovery. Um, and when we see that, we see what is called a risk on environment. So risk is on. People are risking more. Um, equity markets are doing good. There's optimism. Investors are feeling more inclined to risk their money on higher returns. And what we get with that is money leaving safe havens like the euro and the Swiss franc. I mean, like the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc and going to um, more growth currencies, New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar. Um, the pound was more of fundamentals in the Great Britain area specifically. We had some strong data out of um, the pound area, we had some Brexit negotiation talks that were improving. So that is the reason for this pound strength, but New Zealand Aussie strength is from risk on. And the uh, inverse effect of that would be the Japanese yen, Swiss franc, um, moving in inverse relation as money has left these safe haven currencies and went to more risky assets. So as you guys can see real quickly, this past week in the news, we had lots of data coming out. We had very strong reading in the U.S. Consumer confidence, again, remains high. Uh, we had Australian dollar CPI numbers slightly lower than expectations. We had Bank of Japan's meeting. Not really too much came out of that. Um, Canadian dollar GDP beat expectations with a slight growth. Um, Bank of England, we had obviously a vote to remain unchanged with rates. Um, but we had some bullishness out of the inflation report and some bullishness out of um, Great Britain as a whole. Um, and then we had retail sales miss Thursday night out of the Aussie. Initial weakness, but then that actually ended up turning into strong Aussie as well. And then jobs data today, Friday, November 2nd. We had mixed data out of the Canadian dollar here. We had jobs created 11.2 thousand, missed expectations versus 12.7. Unemployment rate ticked 1.1% lower from 5.9 to 5.8% of the population unemployed. Then the US dollar's job report was a great report. They expected 194,000 jobs created last month in October, actually created 250, showed strong job growth in the economy. 3.7% unemployment remains and the average hourly earnings growth remained at 0.2. This takes us over to the charts now where we will begin with the U.S. dollar chart. As you guys can see here, um, U.S. dollar was pulling back. We broke this black counter trend line. U.S. dollar started to push higher. I can get this Fibonacci out of here now. This was the pullback retracement of this initial bullish leg. We call it the 50% pullback. 
set a higher low, caught this next move, right? So we can get rid of this Fibonacci to try to clean this up a little bit. But as you guys can see, we got a higher high, higher low, higher high was formed. Now it pulled back again to set another higher low. Price came right down to retest prior structure, broke, retest, beautiful, break and retest. We love seeing this broken retest and has bounced now initially off these strong US dollar jobless claims and um, jobs created in October. So we, um, I still remain bullish US dollar, especially above this 96 support level here that price bounced off of. We might consolidate a little bit or pull back a little more, but I do think that the dollar continues to move to the upside. So that's what we'll be watching for next week. Euro, um, still trading above this support down here. We did start to break lower, but immediately reversed. We're, we're back up above it now. Um, this prior resistance here, that price rejected the sell off. Price is now respecting once again. We look like we're gonna close here with a bearish engulfing candle. So I do think we'll see some continued downside. Just out of looking at this, I can see we got a little bit of a trend line going on here as well out of this Euro. So I think we'll continue to see sell off in the Euro as well. We've got this yen chart here broke this counter trend line um but we are still trading below the smas we are still respecting structure pullbacks at this lower high that we thought could have rolled over it started to but it's kind of just been chopping around here um, i do think that we will be able to continue to the downside i do think that we'll see this strong weekly support retested again we'll have to wait and see but i think strong i mean weak yen could continue to remain especially if we see the u.s equity markets recovery stay intact next week British pound set a lower low, broke this counter trend line off of, uh, or this trend line, sorry, to set this new lower low out of this shortly formed uptrend, set this lower low reverse trend. Um, now pulled back, we are hitting the 50 SMA, the 20 cross below the 50, setting what looks like could be a lower high, retesting a strong zone could roll over, but we'll have to wait and see. There's some strong fundamental data going on in the pound, but these headlines with the Brexit can cause real volatility in the uh, British pound. So we want to wait and see anything develops over the weekend out of maybe some uncertainties with Brexit deals or things of that nature. We could see a strong sell off next week in the pound. So keep an eye on headlines for Brexit and the great British pound. And um, we'll be keeping an eye on fundamentals to see where this pair is headed. But it's at a it's at a key inflection point where it could either break trend and return back to the upside strong support term resistance here. Or this could be a lower high and price could sell off and continue moving lower. Canadian dollar. Um, as you guys can see, once we broke out of this channel area here, we were bearish. Um, we had some bearish data out of the Canadian dollar. They did hike rates, but they were pretty bearish moving forward. As you can see, price is still continuing to trickle lower a little bit, pull back up a little bit. We're kind of in a base here underneath this resistance. So we're going to have to wait and see. Um, not too much movement today off jobs reports as it was a mixed data reveal. Um, you know, we got a better unemployment rate, but less jobs created. So not really any clear direction with the Canadian dollar. So we'll have to see next week how markets digest this over the weekend and how they come back and how we trade really going into next week. Swiss franc has now broken below this strong weekly support. And our next strong area we'll be watching for is right down here, 92.50. I do think we will remain selling off with the Swiss franc. And I like short opportunities, especially, like I said, with the Japanese yen, if we remain in this risk off theme and we remain doing this, um, you know, flight to risk, really, and see money being removed from the um, safe haven currencies like the Swiss franc. Australian dollar has broken a very, very, very critical resistance, strong trend line and 50 SMA. So uh, my views now have shifted for the Australian dollar. No longer am I looking for shorts. No longer am I looking for the trend continuation. I am now looking for the next impulse leg of a strong reverse of trend, right? So we got early phase of trend reversal, broken the SMAs, um, double bottomed off strong support, broke trend line, broke resistance, broke structure, set a new higher high. Now we're looking for price to potentially do something like this, come back a little bit, and then boom, catch the next impulse leg higher, right? So, um, I really think that we could potentially be seeing a strong shift in trend and shift in momentum for the Australian dollar. A little bit of an inverted head and shoulders. We got a left shoulder here. We got a head and right shoulder here. Um, pretty sloppy, but triple bottom somewhat as well. And uh, really just think this is showing us some strong trend reversal signs right here. And this is something for us to keep an eye on. 
New Zealand dollar, pretty similar story. Um, we broke a closed above yesterday, broken closed above this very strong 66 resistance here that price has been respecting. Uh, if you drew a trend line across these here, you would see it has broken the trend line as well. Broke structure. This was the prior uh, lower high here. Pulled back and now pushed higher. Broke that structure, set a new higher high. So like with the Aussie, we're going to be looking for this being a trend reversal. We want to look to piggyback risk on moves if we see that if we see risk off moves coming into the markets that will discourage this trade and most likely uh you know we'll re we resettle look for what's on the table next and uh, reevaluate our options so that shows the um indexes and what's going on in each individual currency we are now moving over to the u.s dollar major crosses right um so this is going to be the u.s dollar versus all these currencies we just went over starting with the euro as you can see uh, we continue the downtrend price hit a very strong um, support area here and bounced as you can see this big bullish engulfing candle however like we saw with the dollar and the euro we broke and retested this support turn resistance now as resistance as you can see uh, price immediately rejected the zone and has sold off from it and we will have to wait and see how price reacts here but to the downside is where we are looking for the euro and shorts is where I'll be looking as they set up as we get some pullbacks within this downtrend. All right, so this takes us over to the pound US dollar. As you guys can see, similar to the pound's overall performance on the index, you can see here we have the um, price was rebounding off this weekly support, started to set higher highs, higher lows, looked like we were getting a reversal in trend, and then boom, um, we had some you know worries in the Brexit negotiations and all and we had a strong sell-off in the pound and then we came to this week and we had a recovery rally in the pound this is that volatility we've been seeing around the British pound um, between all the you know geopolitical risks and the Brexit deals and um, everything going on in the world we have seen some extreme volatility in pairs like the pound dollar and just the pound overall so we got this whipsaw type move strong sell-off strong recovery we're back now at really strong daily resistance around the 1.30 area also falls on the 20 and 50 smas and if we throw our good old friend fibonacci out here from this move down to the bottom of the move you can see we've retraced to right around the 50 to 618 level of fibonacci so um, we're at a strong resistance here this is where we'll have to wait and see if this was a lower low pull back to a lower high continuation but this is a very strong bullish momentum um, back to back days here so it's really hard to sell into something like that not a good idea so keep an eye on how price reacts to the zone how long it holds or if price temporarily bounces and then pushes to break through that us dollar canadian dollar um, we started to break this trend line started to break up above this resistance here as you can see there's been a lot of volatility with this pair as well strong sell-off instantly recovered big big lower wicks um, so not too much going on here with CAD we are still setting higher highs and higher lows we are trading above the SMAs 20 above the 50 above the 200 perfect placement um, we're setting new higher high structure so now it's really about if if price is able to break above this resistance level if price is able to break above this resistance level then we could look for some kind of break pullback get long um, other than that not really too much going on with dollar CAD on my watch list but just want to stay aware of what's going on with it us dollar japanese yen looks like we might be continuing higher here uh, we had this double bottom here price had a strong bounce to continue higher couple day pullback and now looks like we're getting a strong bounce again we have a lot of room if price breaks above this resistance and starts to move to fill these gaps right we have a lot of move room to push to the upside path of least resistance not much going on here in terms of support and resistance so we do have a nice area to push higher up to around 114 11450 up here if we are able to break and close above this area and we see some bullishness here dollar swiss franc strong strong um moves here broke up and above this 1.00 very strong resistance we've been watching respecting price pulled back immediately rejected this zone now as support right so it was resistance now it broke retested as support here's that break and retest again and we have a very nice lower um rejection wick candle here hammer candlestick um lower pin bar kangaroo tail whatever you want to call it we've got a strong rejection of sellers trying to move lower buyers put coming in and winning the battle 
leaving this tail showing the story above this strong resistance turn support. So we want to be looking for long opportunities here now, potentially on the dollar Swiss franc. Aussie dollar, similar to the Aussie pair, broke structure, double bottomed here. Let's see if we got some divergence. A little bit of divergence here. Prices um, setting higher lows here, lower lows somewhat here. A um, little bit of divergence, but we got a nice double bottom here. See this W formation, M's and W's. This is our W on the bottom, reversal. Price had a strong bullish momentum break here. Broke this trend line, broke the 50 SMA, broke market structure, setting new higher high above the, this areas. Look for price to pull back a little bit and then try to catch that next move higher, that next push higher for the long Aussie dollar potential setups. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, pretty similar story here, right? So we've got um, lower lows, lower highs being set. Price set a lower low, pull back to set a lower high, pull back, failed to move lower, set what could be a higher low, boom, popped higher, broke structure, broke trend line, broke 50 SMA, now set a new higher high. Above all these areas, we want to look for price to pull back and then continue now in the other direction as we have price reversing. Again, here we got a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders. We got a left shoulder. We got a head, we got a right shoulder, pop, now it broke the neckline. I want to look for it to pull back a little bit and then try to catch that next push higher. So now we dive into the watch list I have for this week, starting with New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. <clears throat> As you guys can see here, I called out at the beginning of this week, the fourth touch to this strong weekly zone. <clears throat> I called out how we saw initial bounce <clears throat> rejection of the zone here, and I was calling for a potential rally off this touch and that's basically exactly what we got here very strong week breaking off this level we've now broken this trend line broken the smas broken structure and what we want to look for now is a pullback to look for buy opportunities to try to catch this next wave push higher next one we're keeping an eye on this week here is the euro yen short so this is playing off if the yen um these the, this is going to be paying off if the yen continues to be strong um, from this major move, we've got a 382 retracement. From this prior move down lower, we got a 618. Price is rejecting this resistance. Nice lower low set. Pull back to a lower high. Now look for shorts to catch that next move to the downside. Swiss franc yen, another similar setup. We've got a strong weekly level. Price broken close below. Has now come up to retest it and initially is rejecting it. Um, I would like to see this pair roll over. Continue to the downside. As you guys saw, I like Swiss franc weak. Um, technically, it is below some strong levels. It looks ready to sell off, so I will be keeping an eye on that to the downside this week. Euro New Zealand, another pair on our watch list. The rest of these are pretty much exclusively going to be now we are waiting for pullbacks, right? So we had strong moves this week. This had a strong sell-off. was a nice breakout trade if you trade breakouts, but when you're looking for pullbacks and corrections like I do, we are now looking for price to correct. We had a strong demand zone, strong support, on a 200 SMA, price now is showing us the doji candle, lower rejection wick. What we wanna see here is price recover off of here, just temporary bounce, no crazy strong bullish candles, just a temporary couple day or so bounce. Look for sells off when it finds resistance and continues lower. Euro Aussie, very similar setup. Broke trend line, broke structure, broke SMAs, reverse trend, lower low. Hitting 200 SMA, hitting strong resistance, I mean uh, support, su resistance turn support. Strong doji candle, lower rejection wick on 200 SMA and support. We are now looking for price to bounce, recover, maybe come back, retest this resistance and trend line and get a nice sell short opportunity. Some more similar setups here, but to the upside, Aussie Swiss franc. Again, I like strong Aussie. I like weak Swiss franc. Would like to see this pull back, find support in this area down here, potentially on this trend line, and then look for long opportunities to ride that next push higher. Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, very similar story. Again, breaking these downtrends. We're getting trend reversals here this week. The initial moves off of trend changes can be very strong, so we want to be ready for them. We've got price breaking trend line, breaking SMA, breaking resistance. Look for a pullback. Look for a correction. We got a nice shooting star rejection wick closing today off of this zone here. So we look like we're going to be setting up nicely for maybe a Monday, Tuesday correction, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday rally. That'd be a nice setup here. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, very similar story, right? Broke trend, broke structure, broke SMAs. Now the SMAs are starting to curl up. 20 is about to cross the 50. We're above this structure, so look for a pullback, retest, continuation. 
New Zealand Swiss franc, again, same story. This one's a little bit further along the, the lines of trend change. This one, New Zealand dollar against the weak Swiss franc has developed quicker and uh, a little bit more recently. As you can see, we got a strong resistance coming up up there. So maybe we pull back now, retest this 66 support, and then push up back up into this zone up here and retest this 70, 67 area again and potentially set a new higher high. And finally, we have the Canadian dollar Swiss franc. This one I just find interesting because we have a nice chart pattern forming. We have a bullish pennant, right? We had a strong bullish move. Price has been consolidating since then. We're getting um, tests to the high that are closing in, tests to the low that are closing in. Price is very equilibrium right now. We have a balance between buyers and sellers. We wanna wait for a nice strong break of this level. Potentially and most likely, we would like to see it break to the upside. We could use a one-to-one -one move of the flagpole as our target area, and that would give us a big potential move out of this zone, right? So we wanna wait for a break of this zone and look to see where price is heading next. All right, so that takes us real quick over to our S&P 500 US equity markets. As you can see, here is the recovery. We have um, started the week down here and price has bounced higher. We did hit this resistance and saw some sell-offs here Friday, but all in all on the week, as you can see, switching it over to the weekly, we did have a recovery here off the lows. Price moved all the way down to here and has now ended up closing all the way up here above the open on the week. So bullish week, bounce off the lows. We are still below the 50 SMA on the weekly here. On the daily, you can see we are below the 220 and 50. Strong rollover. This could continue to sell off, but we had a rally right now. We'll have to wait and see what comes next week. Gold. As you guys can see, we broke above this resistance. I've been telling you guys, look for long opportunities above that resistance, now support, and it's still been chopping around. So uh, break up above this area of resistance, I would say look for longs, but it could also break back below and continue the downside, depending on what the equity markets and risk on, risk off is doing. Oil has had one of the um, worst months in a long time. As you guys can see, we sold off um, through the beginning of October, we we're at $76 a barrel. Now, the end of October, we made it all the way down to $64, $63 a barrel here on the WTI crude oil chart. Um, broke below this strong daily support. Um, and now we are looking for just continued sell-offs in the oil. There's definitely going to be some kind of rallies throughout the way. But we want to be looking for shorts. We want to be looking for sells in this market to ride this trend and try to continue this bearish momentum to the downside. All right, guys, that does it. I hope you enjoy what you see here. Uh, we got our live signal room going every week here now at CoreFX. We share our trades throughout the week live to a private group. It's $50 a month, but we have a free week trial. The link is below in the description. Make sure you check it out. Give it a shot if you haven't already. We got a full CoreFX trading course as well. Full trading course, get login details, access for life, over 30 lessons, over 50 videos, packed with content. All for a one-time fee of $250. Make sure you check that out in the links below as well, guys. I really hope you enjoy these videos. I hope you like what you see. Subscribe, like, throw a comment. Um, stay tuned to these videos every week. Come back and check them out. Thank you, guys. Love you all. Hope you have a great weekend, and I will catch you next week.